Assalamu alaikum everybody. Um, it's always awful being one of the last speakers because you hear all these really confident and eloquent speakers and I'm, I'm neither of those. I actually have an entrenched fear of public speaking so please forgive me if I've gone bright red or nearly knocked the thing over. Um, I know you're probably really hungry as well so I'll, I'll try and get through what I need to quickly and not put you off your food because it's... Um, a bit of a distasteful subject. So, um, so I'm a psychologist and by background, in, in the, my day job is I work with young people in schools um, therapeutically. Aside of that, um, RE, well actually it's not religious education, it's something called relationship education. Um, it's a common mistake that people are making. But about a year ago, um, I became aware that the government had made something called RSE, which is Relationship and Sex Education, compulsory for four-year-olds in all schools across England. Um, it's going to be compulsory from September 2020. However, it's already started. So I like to kind of know what's going on behind things, because things generally don't emerge in a vacuum. There's usually an agenda or context behind it. Um, so I just started looking into it. And it's all I can describe as like falling down a rabbit hole. I was incredibly shocked by what's going on and also that nobody is aware of what's going on. And I'm not just talking about the Muslim community, I'm talking about the non-Muslim community as well. The majority of people haven't got a clue what their children are learning in schools in this new kind of relationship and sex education agenda. So basically, obviously, par many parents here, it's really imperative that you are aware. And in these few minutes, I'll give you a synopsis. But there is a website I've done where you can find out more. And I also do talks for the local community as well, um, you know, to kind of inform parents of their rights. So basically, the government, in their wisdom, um, somewhat misplaced, think that all children, due to the sort of societal ills, such as um, teenage pregnancies, pornography, etc., that children now have to learn this in schools um, as a form of a safeguarding. Um, like I said, it's going to be compulsory for four-year-olds, although there's moves to actually make it in nursery, certain ideologies to be taught to two-year-olds. Um, parents actually have very little rights because the state has decided to make it compulsory. Um, it's actually a totalitarian endeavour to indoctrinate our children in secular ideologies regarding relationships. It's actually a core, the core of it is actually an assault on the family. Everything that Islam holds dear, whether it's marriage between a man and a woman, chastity, self restraint, um, traditional marriage is actually under attack. It's not, like I said, just an isolated case. It's actually a strategic movement that is being rolled up out globally. It's being pushed by the United Nations, um, something called Agenda 2030, that is pushing what we're calling compulsory sex education into all schools worldwide. Like I said, it's very strategic, it's very thought out, and it is happening. It's already started, and it is already in our schools. And as parents, we have to be aware, and we have to talk to our children to find out what they are learning because we're going to have to talk to our children about these th issues from an Islamic perspective. Just to summarise, there's kind of three main areas of concerns that parents um, and those who have any involvement with children need to be aware of. By teaching four-year-olds concepts such as pornography and there are resources ready to go, they're actually planting seeds in a child's mind that is actually going to sexualise them at a very young age. Some of these resources actually amount to uh, cartoon pornography. Again, there are examples on the website of what our young children's minds are going to be exposed to. Um, so again, by talking about certain subjects that no child should be exposed to at a young age, their innocence is going to be destroyed. There are obviously societal ills that we need to be aware of and we, that we need to protect our children against, but the way that it's being done is very insidious it's actually a war on morality and a war on our spirituality. And while we're all very aware of really important causes such as Palestine and Syria, there is a moral war going on in our homes and in our schools that the majority of Muslims aren't aware of. And if we don't step up and do something about it and speak our truth as people of religion, the truth of Islam, our children are going to be lost. And I'm not, I'm not just saying this to kind of alarm people, it is. I work with young people. I'm already seeing young people getting lost under different ideologies. So that's one area of concern that so I'll check. Children are being sexualized in society in general, but it's now, now actually state-enforced in our schools. 
The second thing, which probably a lot of you are aware of, which again many people don't want to talk about, is the promotion of um, the homosexual agenda. Like in Islam, the act itself is haram. This isn't being uh, homophobic or anything, but like I said, it is a global initiative that's being rolled out to push it in all schools worldwide around the globe. They've got human rights lawyers involved on in how to kind of make countries comply with this. The government have said LGBT, which is lesbian, gay, bisexual, um, and trans, has to be taught in schools. They're recommending that it is taught as integral. What that means that children from four aren't just going to have a discreet lesson about that it's good to be gay. Um, they're actually it's going to be rolled out across the whole curriculum. For example, you could have a maths question. So Mr. and Mr. Smith want to go on honeymoon. They need a thousand pounds. They've got 200. How much do they need? So they are normalizing same-sex relationships. There's a whole load of storybooks ready um, that are actually already in schools, such as Heather has two mummies, story about homosexual penguins, you know, and they do it in a very clever, insidious way to brainwash our children. And it is brainwashing. I'm a psychologist, so I'm not speaking out of turn. It's actually a long social engineering program to corrupt our children. Because if you get the hearts and minds of the children, you create the revolution. They're trying to split parent from child by taking away parental rights. They're getting children to actually question their religion, their cultural background. If a parent says, um, sorry, if a child says, actually, my mother doesn't agree with me, the school will support the child and social services could be called in under the name of emotional abuse. So it's, it's been well thought out. Um, it kind of emits from the sexual revolution in the 60s. It's a lot of psychology involved, lots of things like radical feminism that is out to destroy men. This is another kind of aspect of it. Um, the transgender movement, um, critical theory, various kind of streams are all fusing. So this has been going on for decades, but it's, we're like at the crest of the wave at the moment. Um, I don't know if anybody saw, but even on the BBC recently, there was a clip of a primary school where six-year-olds were, were told rather, to write a love letter to a person of the same sex. This is happening in our schools. It's not something that's coming. It is already going already happening rather, and we have to be aware of this. We have to speak out. Our ulama need to be strong and speak out on these issues to guide the community. There's one thing me saying it, but I'm, I'm not anybody in the community. We need clear guidance on what is halal, what is haram, what our rights are. And by speaking our truth and speaking our religion, doesn't mean that we're, we're transphobic or homophobic. We're actually, we're protected by the Equality Act as well, but we're too shy or too retiring to actually claim our own rights in fear of that we're going to be sort of gunned down for hate speech. Um, nobody is, is condoning hate speech or hate towards anybody. That's not part of our religion. But to speak our truth and to say what needs to be said to protect our children, which are the future generations, we have to do this because otherwise, 20 years from now, we would have lost our generations, we'd have lost Islam. Sadly, there are many of the Muslim youth that are already turning into same-sex relationships um, because they haven't had the guidance and various other reasons. So it's actually in our community. I think the Muslim community for the gay movement is the final frontier. Up until now, like Christianity has come to it. Up until now, the Muslims have been very staunch against it. But there's a concerted effort now where they're kind of queering the Muslim community. And it's becoming more and more prevalent. And, and again, we need to speak out about that. That's not to say if people in our community have same-sex attraction that we ostracize them, not at all. They, you know, we need to work with them. We don't condone the behavior, but we need to work psychologically or in the mental health capacity with, with these people. The other thing is, again, people may be aware, which kind of follows on, is a transgender movement. So the idea that um, if I feel like I'm a man today, I am a man, I actually ignore scientific fact, biology, anything like that. Um, this is gaining, gaining increased traction, although um, in my psychological definition is actually a mass delusion that's going on and actually everybody is colluding with it, the government included. It's a highly dangerous um, ideology that's being pushed again in schools. Um, this is going to come in under the pretext of gender identity and stereotypes, so that's how they start infiltrating it. And then they're going to get children to question, well, actually, what do you feel you are? That's more important than what biologically you are. 
Um, it's a highly aggressive movement. Um, as I said, they've, they've got government in the palm of their hand, they've got the army, they've got various different um, sectors of society. Um, for us as Muslims, it also means that a man with a beard could rock up in a, in a hijab, say he's a man, and he'd be allowed to sit with the women in the women's section. If anybody said anything, we would be done um, under the Equality Act. So for Muslim women in particular, we have to be really mindful and careful of this. Um, there is no guaranteed um, safe single-sex spaces anymore. The consultation has just gone through, which I think a lot of people have replied to, but we have to talk about these things in our community. We have to stand up, speak the truth, um, and unite. And I think this, this cause of relationship and sex education in particular, as well as things like a, a prevent Islamophobia, is a really important issue that we as Muslims can unite on because um, it affects everybody, it's a family, it's the core of who we are and what we do. Um, personally, kind of talking about unity, I obviously converted to Islam around about 25 years ago. I was Sunni Muslim for nine years, I then found the teachings of the Ahlul Bayt. Um, so I kind of straddle both camps, um, and I have friends from both. So we don't have time to quibble and argue. I don't know if it was Imam Khomeini uh, or Hamanai said that while we're arguing about whether we pray with our hands crossed or our hands by our side, our enemy is actually plotting how to cut our hands off. And I think that's what we need to remember. We're on the same team here. We're all Muslims. Um, you know, the divisions are, are minor in the bigger scheme of things. Well, we're arguing, and even within our community, the Shia community, they're just the bickering is unbelievable. Um, Shaitan is rubbing his hooves together because he's getting what he needs done done while we're all into fighting and arguing about this and that. So um, I think it's really time to wake up, take responsibility for our families, for our children, talk to our children, um, essential, and, and can just pull ourselves together and unite because we are with the truth and Allah is with us. If we just take a few small steps in the right direction, then Allah will bring the help. And we have to stop this RSC and this ideology, these kind of LGBT ideologies from coming in because they are taking our children away from us. If people want to find out a bit more about um, what's happening with RSC and the work I, I'm doing, there is a website. Um, there are leaflets at the back with uh, Sister Seema, who's got the home education um, stall, the BAIT initiative, because homeschooling is another option for, for families as well. Um, but the website is uh, stoprse.com. There's a lot of information there. Um, feel free to ask me questions afterwards. But sorry, it's a bit of a, a negative uh, talk, but I just kind of want people to be aware. And actually, we do have rights as parents, and we do have rights as people of religion, but we actually need to act, activate those, not just sit kind of in a defeatist or a complacent fashion. Um, which I think sometimes we do as a community. So I think we need to feel proud that we're Muslims all with the truth. And um, inshallah, we do our bit, we tie our camel, and then Allah will do the rest, inshallah. Thank you. So much.